My name is Carl LaRue and I'm going to talk about how the gut talks to the brain. I'm from the University College Dublin. When we feel hungry, our gut is sending signals to our brain. It's specifically sending it through using hormones as well as nerves. Now these hormones go directly from the gut to the brain, to the parts of the brain that makes us feel hungry or that makes us feel full. Now, before a breakfast, for example, you would have a hormone such as ghrelin that will go high and make you feel hungry and look for food. But the minute you've actually eaten food, then another set of hormone that we call satiety gut hormones will actually increase. Hormones such as peptide YY, glucagon-like peptide 1 and oxytomodulin. Now they go through the bloodstream as well as through the nerve endings and they go through two parts in the brain. The one is called the hypothalamus which is in the center part and another one is called the nucleus tractus solitarius which is in the back part of the brain that allows the signals to be projected forward. Now this balance of hormones is something that happens with every meal we take. However, patients that are overweight appear to have a deficiency of these hormones. So when they eat, they don't have enough of these hormones and therefore they don't feel full even though they've eaten a bigger meal. So for them to feel full, they have to eat even more calories. So by us understanding how the gut is sending these signals to the brain will allow us to work out what types of food can we put into the gut to optimize the signal or how can we use these signals and give them, for example, in medicines to people who don't have enough of them? Or alternatively, we can use operations that naturally enhances these hormones. The benefit of this approach is that we're using natural signaling systems and therefore reduce the risks that treatment may have to patients. If we look at the brain we need to understand that different parts of the brain play different functions. Right in the center, uh, we have the hypothalamus, which is really the general that controls how hungry we feel and how full we feel. On the outside of the brain, we have the cortical areas that you and I will use for philosophy or to do mathematics. So when I have a conversation with somebody, these cortical areas on the outside of the brain will take the information and store it and process it. However, when I feel hungry or I've eaten and I feel full, that is generated by the subcortical areas or the hypothalamus and the nucleus tractus solitarius in this instance. Now, for the last 2,000 years, we've been trying to talk people thin. We've been trying to give them information. They've been trying their best using the philosophical approaches, but it just hasn't worked. And the reason is because we now understand that the parts of the brain that really control how hungry we feel and how full we feel sit in the subcortical areas. And therefore, we need to be able to address these and help these subcortical areas in the brain if we are really going to change how hungry people feel and how full they feel so that we can make them less overweight and they can maintain the weight loss in the long term. When we do interventions, for example, give specific food or we give specific treatment options, medication, or even when we do bariatric surgery where we rearrange the small bowel and we enhance these signals that come from the gut, we can see the influences when we do functional magnetic resonance imaging. The benefit of doing fMRI means that we can show people pictures and see how they respond to what previously would have been very appetizing type of photos. But when we actually give the right hormones to patients or we do these operations that naturally enhance these hormones, then we can see that the centers that normally would be excited by food are now downregulated. There's less activation in the brain when you show them food that have high calorific value, etc. And that suddenly starts making sense because if people have an optimal treatment either with surgical treatments or with medication they come back to clinic and they tell us you know now I'm just not thinking about food anymore I'm not obsessed with food I don't wake up in the morning thinking only about what am I going to have for lunch or what am I going to have for dinner I can actually get on with the rest of my life 
And because I'm not thinking about food, I don't have to open the cupboard and actually consume all these calories during the day. So what this has shown us, what the science of how the gut talks to the brain has shown us, is that if we enhance the natural signals that come from the gut and they go to the right places in the brain, we can change the behaviors that we as clinicians or patients who are suffering with the disease really want. If we don't change what happens in the reward centers of the brain or in the central subcortical areas of the brain that allows us to feel hungry and full, if we do not change these, then we cannot expect people to maintain behaviors of eating less food in the long term. But if we can use natural ways, either through hormones or through nerves or through operations that change these signals, then we can allow people to do what they want and what we want them to do. And this is the benefit of having the gut talk to the brain in an optimal way. We now understand that obesity is a chronic brain disease. And although it's characterized by excess fat that sits under the skin or sits around the organs, the organ that's probably most involved with obesity is the brain. And if we can target this organ with hormone treatments, with neural treatments, or even with other operations that actually enhance these signals, then we can allow this chronic brain disease to come under control. The impact of obesity is enormous for the individual um, because they suffer specific diseases that reduces their quality of life and also increases um, how quickly they become ill or even how quickly they die. The impact is enormous for healthcare systems because it's so expensive to treat these diseases and these comorbidities of obesity, but the impact is also enormous for society as a whole. But management is feasible and my patients and your patients can benefit if we actually understand how we want to address this disease and understand why we have the problems we do.